Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now today I'm going to have a look at a variant we haven't looked at before. In fact a variant I've never seen before although based on a variant I've seen a fair amount of. This came from the Sudoku Grand Prix last weekend um, and this was round four of the Sudoku Grand Prix and um, I had a bit of a nightmare, actually, in that I thought I'd gone very well. I had 12 of the 16 puzzles done for well over 400 of the 600 points on offer in an hour and a half, with my timer saying I had five minutes left to submit. I went from the room where I have to connect to the printer to the room where the Wi-Fi actually works to submit the answers and found out I was five minutes late, which must mean that in the room I was in, the timer had got interrupted by faulty Wi-Fi for 10 minutes or something. So I didn't get my submission in on time and I didn't register any points for the test, which is quite annoying. But, um, and I mean, I obviously had taken five minutes over the 90 minutes to get to that total, which was pleasing, but I can understand that. So this was the puzzle I didn't attempt because it was too high value. This was 103 points of the 600. So it was meant to take just over a sixth of the time. So somewhere 15, nearly 16 minutes would be an expert's time for this puzzle. That's how hard it is. Now, I didn't solve it during the test, but I probably did spend three or four minutes studying it and trying to make a breakthrough and seeing what I could do. So although I didn't get very far in it, um, this isn't a completely clean solve without having seen it before. I do think I know where to start. Perhaps more importantly, I know some things about it that aren't much use. Now, the rules. The rules are slightly complicated. You can see all the black and white dots on the lines in the puzzle. Now, in a normal crop key Sudoku, the black dots represent um, the boundaries between cells in which one is divisible by two to give the other. So, these two cells, for instance, could be one and two, or they could be four and eight, for instance. The white cells represent a, um, or the white dots, I mean, represent a boundary between two cells that have consecutive numbers in. So these could be one and two, or eight and nine in these two. Now, in this delimited crop key Sudoku, which I've never seen that before, those dots only apply on the lines. So where the lines are, the dots must appear if the if either of those relations, consecutive numbers or numbers divisible by two, happen. If it is one and two, um, I think either color dot could appear, which is not very helpful, but that's the case because they're both consecutive and divisible by two. Now, in a normal crop key puzzle, somewhere down here, for instance, these two cells, you'd know they couldn't be consecutive or divisible by two because there was no dot. But that doesn't apply here because only along the lines does that relation matter. So those two cells, for instance, are neither consecutive nor divisible by two because they're on the line and there's no dot between them. And I mean, you can see that the grid is a heart shape with Sudoku written in it to kind of give the impression that we love Sudoku. And frankly, if you don't, I'm not sure why you're following this video this far in. So nearly four minutes into the video, I haven't even begun to do any solving. The rules are, as I say, fairly complicated, but maybe um, I'll write them with the link and uh, or in the description below the uh, video where you can play the puzzle as well. And otherwise, just pick it up as we go along, I guess. So here we go. Um, this box over here is the place to start. I'm absolutely sure about that because there are so many black dots in it. And most importantly, these three are linked. So um, I'll just tell you that the possible pairs of numbers that are divisible by two, I mean, you'll be able to work this out very simply. They're either one and two, two and four, four and eight, or separately, three and six. So these three, all in the same box and the same column and linked, they must involve two and four. So I'm going to put those in the corners. Now it could be one, two, four, four, two, one, two, four, eight, eight, four, two. But they must involve the two and the four. 
And that means that these two have to be 3 and 6, because they're in the same box and they can't use 2 or 4. So they have to be 3 and 6. Now, what else can we learn about this box? Um, we've got a pair of cells that are adjacent here, and the other numbers that we don't know about are 1, 5, 7, 8, and 9. Well, 1 and 5 can't be in there because they'd have to be adjacent with something, um, and the only other candidates are 7, 8, and 9. So these must come from 7, 8, and 9. They must involve 8 in one of those two cells. And the other one is either 7 or 9. That means that 5 must be in one of those two cells. And I mean, I got this far during the competition. Beyond that, yeah, not, I didn't get very far. So let's see whether we can make any further progress. Now, um, this has either, ah, oh, yeah, the fact that eight is there means that this is now a one, two, four, triple. We know that. Um, we don't have to worry about whether there's an eight in it anymore. So obviously, if it's one, two, four, two must be in the middle, and we've placed a number in the grid. Now, we don't know which way around the one and four go. But at the bottom, we do know that they're connected to this cell, which therefore must have a number consecutive to one or four, which must be two, three, or five. And it can't be three, because there's got to be a three in the column already. So that's two or five. Uh, the relation's getting a bit harder to establish. This could this is consecutive to two or five, so it could be any of one, three, four, or six. By the time you get down here on this sort of run of connections, consecutive connections, they could all be almost anything. So I'm not going to fill in the possibilities beyond that one. Now, what else can we then determine? This could be a five. If this was a five... This would have to be a 4, because it's consecutive to 5, and it can't be 6. This would have to be 3, because it couldn't be 5, and it's consecutive to 4. This could be 2 or 4. That's got a lot of possibilities here. This could be 4 or 6. I don't know. I don't think we're getting very far with that. What if this was a 5? Yeah, this is interesting. If this was a 5, yes, okay. If this was a 5, this cell would be 7 or 9. You can see that 1, 2, 4, 3, 6 have now gone somewhere else in the box. So if 5 goes there and 8's down here, this has to be 7 or 9. Now that's interesting because of this cell, which has to be consecutive to 7 or 9, has to be even, therefore, either 6 or 8. We know it can't be 6 because that's in the column already, this would be 8. Then this would be 7 or 9, just like... So now we'd have a 7-9 pair, and what could go with the 8 down here? Nothing. So that's not possible. So bizarrely, the 5 does not go here. It definitely does go here. And we can go back to that string I was talking about, where it's got to be 4 here. This has to be 3. This is now 2 or 4, consecutive to the 3. This could be anything in the 1, 2, 4, 8 chain apart from 4, which is already in the row. This is 4 or 6. And which way rounds could these work? If that was 2, this would be 1. This could be either 4 or 6, then. I think that's right. If this was 4, this would be 2 or 8. This would have to be 6, because that would be 4 up. So that doesn't prove anything. Um, this cell must be 7 or 9. These are made up of 8 and either 7 or 9. Now, where are the black cells? Now, what I do know is that these aren't particularly helpful. I mean, I'm just going to mention that. You'd think normally a run of three black dots connected on, on the line in a row would be helpful, but because they suddenly offset into a different box and a different column. It could be almost anything. 3, 6, 3, 6, 1, 2, 4, 8, 
one, two, one, two. I mean, the, the possibilities are too big. That's not actually a very profitable area, I don't think. So I'm going to focus more on, well, this row and these two black dots, they're quite interesting. So what have we got in this row? Um, these are a divisible by two pair. These are a consecutive pair, but both of them have counterparts up here. Now remember that seven, eight, and nine can never be involved in a division by two, so they can never be on one side of a black dot. Therefore, 8 can't be in this pair either, because it would have to be consecutive with something else. And we're saying that 7 and 9 can never be one side of a black dot. So, these two don't involve 7, 8, and 9. Therefore, they don't involve 6, because 5 is already done in the row. Therefore, they're from 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, their counterparts up here would be, um, there's a lot of possibilities because six is now possible. They could be anything from one, two, three, not four, six or eight. Okay, one, two, six or eight. Now, can we narrow it down? Or maybe, yeah, because we've got a pair here as well. That could be three, six, or it could involve the eight. Don't think it could be one, two anymore, because that would be three, four, that would be impossible. Could it be two, four? No, same problem. So this either involves the six or the eight over here. I don't quite know how to notate that. If it involved the six, this would be four, this would be one, this would be two and three. Maybe the thing to do is to look at this and say, what would happen if this was Four, which I think is less likely. If this was four, this would be six. These would involve a two. Five, four, six would be gone. Oh, this wouldn't be possible. We're saying that this pair has to involve six or eight. Well, if we've gone, if we've had five, four, and six already in the row, they can't be eight, four, and they can't be six, three. So this is not four, this is one. Ooh. Okay. Now, these can't involve a 1. Um, now, these, again, let's see if we can... Well, first of all, let's note, we know that they can't involve 7 or 9. So the other 7 or 9 in the row has to be there. They must involve 8, because where else can an 8 go in the row? So it must be 8, 4 there. Let's get rid of the 4 from there. We can put in 6 here. Um, uh, it doesn't tell us which way round these go at all. Okay, but up here, 2, we can't have a 4 because there's already a 4 in the row. So we've got a 1 and a 6. So that's a 1, 6 pair. This can't be 1 anymore. Um, four, two. This can't, oh yeah, no, this must now be four, I think. It can't be two anymore because that can't be one or four. So that's four up there. Wow. So what else have we got? Um, we've got a pair here and they don't involve, I mean, a consecutive pair. And they don't involve one, six, and four. So it could be 2, 3, or something involving an 8. Nothing else will work in the row. And if it was 3, 2, it would be like that. 4 there, 3 there, 2 there, because they're all consecutive because of the white dots. Or 7 or 9 here, and 8 here, because they'd have to involve the 8. Okay. Um... Ah, and looking at runs of three because of the white dots here. Actually, there's another one here. 
This could be one, two, three, or five, six, seven. So the one in the middle of them must be two or six. These three, which are all in the same box with two, three, and six, they have to be seven, eight, and nine. So the eight has to be in the middle with seven or nine either side of it. Now that eight places our eight here. Mark eight and the possible eight. So we've got a seven, nine pair in this box, seven, nine pair in that row, seven, nine pair in that row and that box. Wow, we're getting a lot of weird seven, nine pairs. Now these other cells are one, four, and five. All we know about this place is that they're not consecutive or divisible by two, but they couldn't be. I don't think we're going to get to use this negative constraint along the lines much at all, which is irritating because it's normally a very powerful tool in a crop. Um, so we've got eight, seven, nine, four used in this row now. And this is a pair. So it's either got to be six, five or two followed by one and three. Now, what did we say? This this is either a one, two, three, or a five, six, seven. Yeah. So this is either one, three, or seven. Um, how can we make further progress than this? Now, this is a yeah. This is a duo, isn't it? And we've used four eight. If this was Oh, this can't be three six because this is either one two three or five six seven. Both of them use one of the numbers from three six. So this isn't three six and it's not four eight. It must be one two. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, I'm sorry. I should be putting them in as full digits. One and two. So this is six in the middle of five and seven, and that's resolved the seven nine pairs that we've got going. Excellent. So this is now a 4-5 pair. This is 1. We can disambiguate 3-6 there. Last number in this row is a 3, and that's okay with the negative constraints. Wow. Okay, so it does get going. Now this is either 1 or 4 being divisible by 2 with this one. And this one is either... Two or eight, same logic. This cell is one away from seven, so it's six or eight. This one is nine or seven, and it can't be nine, so we can fill in a seven. Um, still haven't got any resolution on this though. Now we've got a two eight pair up here. Have I noticed that before with one six four? That's making this a single. That must be seven now. So we can take seven out for possibilities there. These ones on the end are three, nine, or five. And look, this one's on a black dot, so it can't be five or nine. It has to be three. With six above it, that makes this nine. This is five. Here we've filled that row. This connects to the 9, so we know the, which way around the 8, 4 is. This connects to the 9, it's an 8. Ha ha, that makes this a 2. And now it's coming together. Now I kind of enjoy this a bit more now because we're making some actual serious progress and I like it when it flows a bit. So what's this pair up here? It doesn't, it's not 3, 6, they're gone. It doesn't involve 8, so it must involve a 4. No, it must involve a two and either one or four. Um, this one must be consecutive with one, two, or four. And one, six, two, four have already been used. That has to be three or five. Which means this can't be one. That doesn't mean this can't be two, but it can't be four because that's already in the column. So this increases. This is either one, then two, then three, or two, then four, then five. Um, what about?
about this pair? 1624 can't involve the 3 or 5, must involve the 8. What about this pair? Can't be 1 and 2 because there's a 1 and 2 in the end column. So again, it must involve the 8. In fact, it must be 8, 9, mustn't it? Because the 7's now gone. Yeah, must be. That's 8, 9, 3, 7, 4, 5. So this is a 6. Um, I can't place the 1 and 2 yet, but that 1 and 2 forms a pair with that one. So this can't be 2. Ha <laughs> ha! That's 4. That's 2. I think I originally said this could be 2, 4, 5, but it, this could still be a 3, actually, because that's consecutive with the 4. Wow. Okay, this cell, which I said earlier was 2 or 8, we've now got an 8 there. I've had it when I said that, actually. Sorry. Uh, that doesn't change. Oh, this is a 1 because we've got 4 above it. Excellent. This can't be 1 anymore. Still be four or six, but that either way, this is a five now. Um, that four or six links onto this one, so this must be odd, must be either three or five. This must be even, something from 2, 4, or 6, because we've already got 8 in the column. This one must be divisible by 2 from that. Aha! But here comes the negative constraint. It's not divisible by 2 from that 2. So we can forget that being a 2. This can't be 1 or 4, that's okay. But now it can be... I suppose it could be 2... Because that wouldn't be wouldn't fulfil either Kropke criterion, or it could be three or eight. Oh, okay. I thought we were going to get something a bit better than that. Um, but at least we've used the negative constraint once. Used about that for ridiculous reasons. Now we've got one six two four used here. Seven has to be in one of these two cells because of the sevens in column four and six already. If seven was here, this would be eight and nine. We'd have five here and three here. If seven was here, that would be eight. Uh, it's not resolving anything immediately. Ah, oh, the negative constraint, is that? Yes. This can't be seven. Oh, look, no, never mind the negative constraint. Yeah, we will in a moment. Look, we've got two ones. Sorry if you've been noticing that earlier and shouting. That gives us a one here. Now, the negative constraint does matter in sorting out five and seven here, because if this was a seven, there'd be a white dot below the eight. So good. Okay, so that puts the seven there, eight there. Um, that's resolved the 9, 8. The 1 has resolved the 2, 1 pair here. That's 3 or 5 as well as that. That puts 9 here. Ah, oh, it really does make you work. So we've got the other of 3 or 5 down here. 7, 3, 5. This can't be 3 anymore. Ah, and that means this can't be 6. That's a 4 now. That resolves 5, 4. That resolves 5, 3. That resolves 2, 3. We can use the black dots. Fill in 1 and 6. 8. 8, I mean, 2, 1. 6 and 9 here. There's no lines to help us. But we are surely now on the home track. That's a 4 with an 8, 5 pair below it. 3, 9, 7, 6. Getting lots of pairs. Ah, oh, that's now a 6 because of the 4 over here. So, 4, 2. No, oh, that doesn't sort out the pairs. No, but it does sort out the 6, 9 pair there. That sorts out 7, 6. We've got a 3 to complete the row, and we are now finishing. I mean, yeah, hats off to anybody who's doing that in... 
15 or 16 minutes. That's an impressive performance because that start really isn't easy. I mean, I think I've had a good run at that and still, what am I, 20, I suppose 21 minutes since I began solving. That's, that's not bad. Tough puzzle. Like the heart Sudoku theme, that's really pleasant. Um, thanks very much for watching. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Um, Simon will be on later with a classic, I think, today. Let's hope so. And um, do look at our apps and go to our Patreon site for more content. All the usual stuff. So thanks very much. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.